This video is about moments. The moment of a force measures the turning effect of the force on a body. So how effective is a force in turning something? For example, if you're pushing against a door, you're turning the door about the hinges. So the moment measures what effect the force has. Now a moment is defined as the product, that means you multiply the magnitude of the force, so you, you multiply the force by the distance of the force from uh, a particular point P. And if a body's in equilibrium, its clockwise and anti-clockwise moments are equal. Here's a plank of length 3 metres and it's resting on two supports. Let's call those supports um, A and B. What forces are acting here? Well, the supports must be offering some sort of force upwards, otherwise the plank would fall through the supports. So let's call these um, R1 and R2. The plank has a weight, and if it's a uniform plank, it means that the weight acts from the middle point on the plank. And the weight of this plank, uh, we're told, is 20 newtons. Let's mark some distances. Let's call that naught. It's 3 metres long, this plank, so let's call this point is 1.5. And apparently this point is 2. Obviously this is reading from a question that you can't actually see, but the, all this information is given to you. Now, let's equate the vertical forces. This plank is in equilibrium, so R1 plus R2 equals 20. Now let's take moments about A. If we take moments about A, then the force, which is the weight, this weight here, has a magnitude of 20 and it's 1.5 metres from A. So this point, this uh, weight has a moment of 20 times 1.5. Now let's take, uh, now let's consider the anti-clockwise moments because um, this is a clockwise moment about A, but anti-clockwise about A, we've got this force here, R2. Because the clockwise moments are equal to the anti-clockwise moments, this is equal to R2 times 2. Because the moment is the force multiplied by the distance. So from this equation, you can see uh, 20 times 1.5 is 30. You can see that R2 equals um, 15. From the first equation here, the equation that we had here, let's call it 1, we can see that 1 now means that R1 equals 5. Now one thing you may be wondering is how did you know to take moments about A? And I didn't, I just chose that. I could have taken moments about B. What would have happened if I'd done that? Well, the Anti-clockwise moment now would be 0.5, that distance, times 20. So it's force times distance, 20 times 0.5. And that equals the clockwise moment here. This distance here is 2, so it's 2 times R1. Now 20 times 0.5 is 10, 2 times R1 is 10, so from that we can get R1 equals 5. So this is a good check, um, but there's no need to 
do it in two places to find out the answers. We could have, uh, we just got that from here. One final thing to consider is when we took moments about A here, why didn't we include the force R1? We, we included this force and this force, so why do we ignore that force? And that's because the moment of this force about the point is R1 multiplied by 0. Because if we're taking moments about A, the distance from A to A is 0, obviously. So when we take moments about A, we could write down R1 times 0, a bit unnecessary. Same thing when we took moments about B. We didn't include R2 because the distance of B from itself is 0. You can, in fact, take moments about any point. We could take it about there. Or, obviously, we could take it about the middle of this point here. We can take moments about any point we feel like. Taking, it, uh, taking moments about a point where you've got an unknown force simplifies your working. It means one of the equations we get uh, has only got one variable.